Good morning, everybody. Well, today the old grumpy gardener wants to take on psychological counseling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, has anybody else out there ever had the experience of visiting counselors or uh, psychologists? Uh, no? Yes? <laughs> Let me know. Tell me about your experiences. I have mine. Uh, I have four. Four times that I had experienced uh, counselors and sometimes psychiatrists uh, associated with counselors. But I honestly have almost nothing good to say about it. Now, uh, has anybody else noticed um, that the advertising lately has really increased over uh, mental issues? you know ask your friend how are you feeling you know all this touchy-feely stuff it's there's so much of it way beyond what we had in the past and uh oh that was, well, was last sunday actually that uh boy oh boy did i get slapped in the face i usually turn on uh, you know meet the press and uh, face the nation one after another on sunday mornings and i'm listening to the political stuff you know Listen to some guys yak yak. It's almost always, you know, people from Washington, ordinarily, um, they'd be judges. There's lawyers sometimes, mostly politicians, people from Congress, you know. Occasionally we get, you know, people from Ukraine and other foreign nations too on these shows. Well, I got a real surprise. It was uh, um, Face the Nation, I believe. Yeah, anyway, one of the other. Um, but uh, the guest was Michael Phelps, the Olympic swimmer. And uh, I'm going, what is Michael Phelps doing on this show? Well, what's he up to? He's telling us all about his depression. Yes, Michael Phelps is on assuring America that even Olympic gold medal swimmers can succumb to depression and that we need to deal with it. Okay, now. This is public service stuff to the max. It's got nothing to do with what's ordinarily on that show. He was put up there uh, because someone's, someone, something is quite aware out there that uh, the COVID completely disarranged almost everybody's gut biome, and if you caught it, and that that led to anxiety, depression, and PTSD. And if you don't believe me, Oh, have a look in Congress these days. Hmm? Yeah, those people in Congress caught the stuff. There were a lot of them that, you know, went along with the oh, shoot up bleach, don't wear the mask stuff. And so they were, you know, real snotty about it. And so they contracted the stuff a lot, the, or a lot of infections. And now today, I'm telling you, uh, it, it's become completely ridiculous. I mean, I, I used to laugh at Canadian Parliament because I think those guys drink their lunch and they, they get into fisticuffs there too. But we never really saw anything like this in, in our legislatures. And boy, oh boy. What I wish uh, under the current circumstances, if, if they're going to uh, play kindergarten games up there rather than manage the country, um, that we get a mud pit. Yeah out behind the building and when they get down to it like they did over false eyelashes that they mud wrestle and they will put the cameras on it bring the press in and let every all of us sit around and enjoy the mud pit you know i mean if they're gonna do something so stupid and ridiculous uh, when they're supposed to be managing affairs of the country the least they can do is give us some amusement sure a bit of wet t-shirt mud wrestling <laughs> dude i'm with it i'm with it you know um won't accomplish much anything, but maybe they'll blow off some steam. I don't know. Whatever. Maybe one will drown the other one in the mud and solve the problem for us. You know, <laughs> the problem really starts with the fact that some of those people that are in Congress should never have been elected to Congress. Be careful, people. When you go to those polls, watch out what you're doing. These people are in charge of your country. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So anyway, if you need to know whether COVID affected the way people thought or not, just take a look at the newsreel and look into on Congress. And it's on all the campuses. It's around the planet. Everybody is up in arms. Nobody's happy. 
Yeah, they're all upset. And you know what? They don't know why. That's why there's so much advertising now. If, pay attention. If you don't believe what I'm saying, you don't have to believe what I'm saying. In fact, I say don't believe it. You look for yourself. See, it's there. Yeah, somebody knows we got a problem. Well, you know, when I look at this stuff and I say, geez, we really need to do something about this. And so, of course, what's the first thought that comes to my mind when I see that people are all depressed and anxious? Well, gosh, they need counseling. Uh, wait a minute. No. I don't think so. <laughs> you know, usually what happens with counseling, you know, is next to nothing. And then uh, after the fact, they probably, uh, you know, turn you over to some psychologist who can write a prescription for psychiatric drugs, you know. So they'll give you an antidepressant because you're upset. And that doesn't fix anything either. In some cases, it makes it way worse. You see, now, you probably see these commercials. Have you seen the ones out there for you know? Oh, I'm taking my antidepressant. They got a little mask over their face, and it's frowning. You know, it's smiling, but they're frowning behind the mask. Why? Because they're taking a drug to get rid of their depression, but it isn't doing anything. So they got another drug you can take, and if you add that to it, you won't be depressed anymore. But guess what? The side effects might include suicidal thoughts. You know. Uh, wanting to stab yourself with a fork, you know, uh, stuff like that. Uh, <laughs> it's a little bit like these weight loss drugs, you know, where they came on initially as diabetes drugs for a serious illness that a lot of people have. But then sooner or later, oh, they're weight loss drugs. Oh, and then as soon as they're weight loss drugs, next thing we find out, oh, they cause depression. Oh, well, here, have some more pills. Eesh. Uh, yeah. So, you know, as I said, I've had my experiences with counseling and found it to be completely useless. Um, the first one was probably the most interesting and the one I will discuss a little bit. Um, I mean, I was, uh, you know, a high school student, like a lot of you were in my teen years. And, well, you know, I'd already been through a uh, religious education for eight years in a Lutheran school. And they kept trying to convince me that if I didn't step right, that Satan was going to take me right to hell. You know, God would judge me and I would be damned eternally uh, for that uh, piece of candy I stole when I was, you know, 10 years old. Uh Right. Well, I couldn't believe any of it. All right. Yeah, I mean, the Jewish history that was recorded in the Bible, yeah, it was legitimate. I believe most of it, actually. I also believe that a guy named Christ existed on this planet, um, on and on, and that much of what they said about him was probably true. But that doesn't mean the religion they based around it made any sense to me whatsoever, and it didn't. You know. So I was... Um, well, as a young man already uh, challenged my authority figures to say, hey, this line you're putting, it's bogus. This is human invention. This has nothing to do with God. You guys are thinking like you're God and you're imagining what would God say, you know, or what would God do? Well, you're not God. <laughs> you can't understand God. If such a thing exists, it's infinite and eternal and it created everything. That's not you're not capable of embracing that idea. It's a insane concept uh, that we're to, you know, come closer to God. Anyway, uh, so I went through that, but then I got into high school, and I was of the mistaken impression that I was going there to get an education. That is, I was going to learn skill sets. I was going to pick up knowledge. You know, I would come out a little smarter than I went in. I'd know more. Well, that was my idea. But I got inside of it, and I said, yeah, that was part of the curriculum, was teaching us mathematics and so on. But the bigger job was socialization. Yeah, in my opinion, and this I'm not alone in this one, the, uh, the educational system in the United States is designed to punch press people who wear, you know, gray work trousers and punch the clock in American industry, you know, carry a lunch pail and go, hey, hi, Charlie, hi, Fred, you know. <laughs> That's what they try to do. I mean, I got thrown out so many times 
God, why? Well, it was the old days. I didn't shave enough. That was an offense. Thrown out. I was wearing sandals at school without socks in them in warm weather. No, it's an offense. Threw me out. You know, no. I didn't have a belt in my pants, in my blue jeans of all things. Uh, no, threw me out. Got to wear a belt, dress code, you know. I don't know. They kept applying these stupid, ridiculous things upon me to where I went for an education. And in fact, I did graduate from high school despite their best efforts on the A honor roll. Okay. I was a good student. I was just a lousy student when it came to trying to socialize me because what they do is they remove most of your imagination, they kill your creativity, and they turn you into worker drones if you follow the program. I don't want any part of it. No. Uh, there was consideration on going on to art school, but uh, I'd probably end up drawing Coke bottles. Didn't want to do that. So I went into rock and roll. Yeah, because I saw freedom in there. There was no time clock. They didn't wear gray work suits, you know. We set our own schedules and so on and so forth. And <laughs> and with the who around talking about my generation, yeah. I hope I die before I get old. Yeah, that kind of stuff, you know. It was revolutionary. It was, arou it was rousing. We loved it. Look for social change, you know. It was uplifting. I went that way. That wasn't a bad choice. I wouldn't be the guy I am today if I hadn't started my work career as a rock and roll guitarist. <laughs> yeah, I'd be probably one of the gray work suit guys standing at the time clock. If I was lucky, I'd have had a pension, but they got rid of those before I quit the workplace, too. So, yeah, yeah. So, there we go. Uh, it didn't work out well for me, school. You know, I, I like I said, I was an A student in high school, and I made it through college with a 3.8 grade average. So I'm not a dumb guy. I just don't like people telling me what I got to be, and how I got to be, and what I got to be. Don't even try it. There's a few people around on the channel who in times and comments have told me what I should be doing. They usually are sorry <laughs> they said such a thing. I don't care whether they're right or wrong. Don't tell me about it. It's your problem. Uh, anyway. So my guidance counselor couldn't figure me out. She says, well, you're a bright guy, you know. They put me through all the, uh, the cognition tests, you know, and IQs and all that stuff. And everything come up roses. I was I had a good brain, smart kid. Uh, didn't seem to be anything wrong with me, you know, that way. Except, man, I had an attitude and I wasn't taking it down. So they sent me off to a, uh, a psychologist that worked with the district. Yeah. I got myself, in high school, I got my own private head shrinker on the tax stuff. <laughs> it was funny. There's Gracie. Hey, Gracie. Yeah, my kitty heard me over here, so she come up. Right, Gracie? No one tells you what to do. Uh -uh. She's allowed. Yeah, right now she's eating grass. So that's good, right? Yeah, that's what the kitty does. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. I love this cat. Well, anyway, back to the subject. Uh, yeah, so they got me this uh, this guy, Mr. Orsolini, uh, nice nice Italian guy. And uh, it was weird. Me and I never had any experience with. I had no idea what to expect. What's going to go on here? And well, basically, it was he just sat around, and shot the breeze. Yeah, really. I mean, it was as if he was getting paid, you know, for this one by the school board. And whether he could or could not accomplish anything really didn't matter. He was going to get the paycheck anyway. So we just talk out. It was all right. I'd go in, talk to the guy once a week, you know. We'd discuss things, but never, ever touched, really, that as far as I could see, any meat to the situation. Um, although there was a point in time where he started to give me some funny looks. Yeah, that's what my response is. Elicited, I, I, I elicited the appearance on his face that there was something going on here. Uh, you know, I was confusing him. And so I went in the next week and, well, guess what happened? The dude subjected me to batteries of uh, 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 parapsychological testing, EP, ESP testing, uh, telepathy, uh, remote viewing, etc., etc. Yeah, it's real. 
I'm, you know, 17 year old high school student, and well, I already knew that I had good friends in my life that I didn't need to talk to. This we knew. We 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 think. That was it. Yeah. So my experiences with that kind of thing were already there, but I never really substantiated any of it. Well, this guy ran me through the battery, and I came out smelling roses, well over 80 percent. Um, remote viewing and, and telepathy and so on I have a f and there's only two reasons I could think of the guy did this there's only two possible reasons because I've never figured it out uh, one was that he suspected that I was thinking what he was thinking and he wanted to find out or the guy was working for the CIA, actually, even though he was employed by the school district, and <laughs> Tracy's banging the stand here. Uh, he was recruiting for the remote viewing program, uh, Stargate, which was active at the time. The CIA used psychics uh, against the Russians, you know, and, and in many other ways, too. Look into it if you're not familiar with the CIA Stargate program, because almost all of that is declassified today. Yeah. We once used, and we still do, use psychics to figure out what's going on in intelligence. Well, the guy could have been working for them and looking for candidates. I don't know. No idea. Uh, but, well, shortly afterwards, then I I get dumped by a, a girlfriend that, whew, boy, I, I seldom ever got quite that tight and got hurt so bad. I was very depressed. Yeah, and I went back to the guy the next time, and I said, oh, man, uh, I didn't want to talk. I, I just, well, what the guy did about it, this is a counselor. He says, oh, he just got normal teenage problems. Get out of here. That was it. I never saw him again. After he did par paranormal testing on me, uh, so, you know, he, and he saw I had regular teenage depression issues because of a love affair, uh, he threw me out of the office. Never understood it. Not really. I never will, probably. <laughs> right, Gracie? Yeah, Kitty's right here. Yeah. Well, anyway, that was my first experience, and I said, well, that was very confusing and useless. Okay. Um, and he basically told the school that there was nothing wrong with me. <laughs> and that was it. Well, years later, you know, whether it be with... Uh, you know, spouse, marriage, or uh, with significant others. I've ended up three other times in the counseling stuff because of the partners. I don't want to go into it. And it was awful. Yeah. I have my own ideas about how things should work and my attitude towards a lot of modern psychology and counseling, the way they handle it. I don't think it's right. No, I disagree with it. I'm not, I'm not going to go into the, deep, the depth of it. But I have my own opinions on it. And, uh, and I don't like what they do. It was, for me, has been almost completely useless. Worse. Worked me up, made my problems even worse than they were originally. So, um, the con uh, that and you know and eventually what they're going to do is they're going to try to get you happy pills that's the whole thing you know they do the talk 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 but the whole idea like Sigmund Freud you know with spending three years on the couch w with him going uh huh uh huh it, this doesn't happen anymore unless you're really rich right they take the fast route they talk 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 they hand you a bottle of pills they send you out the street that's yeah, it's, it's again, <laughs> just like the schools. Yeah, they're trying to come up with, uh, uh, you know, people that don't cause problems. That's about it. Standardized. Give them all a happy pill. Get them all thinking everything's just fine. Well, in my case, you know, I, I, in most cases, I've never had depression because of anything except incident. Yeah, I would get into a situation, whether it was a broken love affair usually or something, loss of the family, you know, and, and I, I would become depressed. That's kind of natural, honestly. You know, it's not unusual that we have to go through that period when something horrible happens in our lives. And that's just no avoiding it. Not really. 
I can't walk out of a, a you know a long-term relationship with a breakup of a family and loss of property and say, oh, it's okay. Yeah, I'll just move on, you know, and things will be better tomorrow. <laughs> no one does that. <laughs> you suffer. Yeah, and you suffer until you get over it. That, eventually, for me, that's what I had to do. I just had to suffer my way through it until I worked it back out the other end, said, this is ridiculous. you got to have to go on with your life. Yeah, it wasn't that bad. You're still here, you know. And do some brain rewiring. Yeah, and so that right there was where I, well, really, I think that was where I totally turned on modern psychology and what they do. It was the happy pill thing because at the time they were trying to give me stuff like, say, Prozac, for instance, which was awful. Yeah, people wanted to commit suicide. People wanted to kill other people from it. It was terrible, the side effects. Well, then, uh, what they would tell me, I would say, well, okay, if I take this, how long do I have to take this, Jeff? You know, oh, forever. What? Oh, yeah, you, you, you get a chemical imbalance in your brain. Yeah, and the only way you can cure it is with this drug. You take this drug, and it will help straighten out the imbalance. And as long as you take the drug, you're going to be okay. But you can't stop taking the drug. You have a chemical imbalance, and it's permanent. And I already knew that they were crazy. I wasn't the one who was nuts here. Uh, they were absolutely wrong on that because I'd already been through experiences in my life of rewiring my brain through neuroplasticity by changing bad habits and becoming a different person. I have been constantly on the road to change as an individual. And the way I think changes with time because I rewire the way I think. Yeah. The input you give your brain, the way you use it, is the way it responds. And when you give it nothing but donor garbage, oh, the world, everything sucks so bad. My life is miserable. All it does is secrete chemicals that support that point of view. And that's hard to stop. <laughs> it's real hard. I know. Been there. It's not an easy thing. It's probably even harder than quitting smoking cigarettes which that's a difficult one too and again there's another brain rewiring and i'd been through it more than once when they were trying to convince me that i was permanently chemically disabled i said horse crap um i was so addicted to cigarettes at one point in my life and you know what they stink and i hate them now how did i get there I rewired my brain the way I think. I respond completely different to tobacco these days. Every now and then, the nostalgia comes on of when I used to grow my own. And I used to make cigars by hand, you know, and get thrown out of everybody's houses for the smell. And yeah, my way, it was fun. I enjoyed that part of it. I didn't enjoy the addiction, though. Well, that's what they tell you, and so I knew they were wrong, and the approach is wrong, and they're still using the same approach. It has not changed. Okay. Well, the last time I experienced uh, problems with mental cognition, it was a little different because I didn't have, you know, an emotional thing. I, I didn't lose family members, you know, nothing like that. It was the COVID. Yeah, it was the COVID. And, uh, you know, flashing back to my experience with that original counselor and the, uh, uh, the, the tests he gave me, when COVID first hit the United States in the first week, when they were rioting in the streets everywhere, you know, and so on, I looked at it and I knew. I could tell. This messed with the way people thought then it was going to be really bad because they are spreading it like crazy as they go out in the streets and they start screaming they are broadcasting the saliva and they are giving it to everybody okay and well viruses I, at that point i did my research and i realized that well i already knew that rabies virus makes people or animals aggressive so they bite the sal saliva has the virus um, Common flu. Most of you don't know this. 
but it's true. The common flu makes you extra sociable in the first 24 hours when you show no symptoms. Why? So you go out, socialize with all your buddies, and spread it to everybody. Yeah. The virus takes over your thought process. It's a common one. The one we all had, you know. Yeah. We just didn't realize it. I spotted it one time. And then I spotted it again with flu infections. I saw the tendency in myself and said, boy, this is cute, queer, you know. Well, it, now, anyway, because of what I saw, and what I saw was accurate, take a look at the mud pit in Congress right now. Look at the world situation. You want to know whether people are upset? They are really upset. And it isn't just about this, that, and the other thing. It is and it isn't. But the virus set them off. Uh, it set me off. Well, I'm fairly cognizant of my mental state, and uh, I'm also protective of it. And after I contracted the disease, I saw that what I had visualized was exactly correct. It went straight into my gut biome, completely messed it up, and left me so psychologically disabled, at least during the course of the illness, that it was horrible. After the fact, it was lingering. It was this long-haul condition where I didn't have as much energy as I had beforehand. My enthusiasm wasn't what it had once been. Things that I'd loved to do my whole life, I didn't really care about anymore. They weren't interesting. Now, I could tell myself, well, you're getting old, Bill. Yeah, it's true. I lose energy because I'm getting old. Now, I could tell myself, well, you've been doing them things your entire life, Bill. Isn't there a point when it just becomes a job and you don't really get a jolt out of it anymore? Well, yeah, that is true. I've been through that. And on and on. So I had ways of rationalizing all of this. And I went on rationalizing for at least a year until I finally said, no, nah, it ain't going away. I, this is a long-haul situation. Um, then when I contracted another virus that had a similar impact on my thought process recently, I said, okay, that's the end of the story. We got to do something. Going for counseling? No. Nah. <laughs> Taking happy pills? No. Nah. So what was I going to do about it? I researched the gut biome, found out that there were ways of addressing the damaged gut biome, which is really your mental state, folks. Yeah. I know a lot of you have experienced this, and you are probably not even quite yet cognizant that anything has really happened to you. It's the nature of depression and anxiety. It becomes part of your thought process, so it's natural. Yeah, the rest of the world's a bunch of naive fools with a grin on their face. Uh, you know better. Yeah, it's nasty out there. Uh, get run over by a truck anytime, you know? Yeah, and we begin to think that way, and then everything seems normal to us from behind those smoke-colored glasses. Um, I know. <laughs> yeah, I know. You can get used to depression, sort of. Yeah, it can linger for years and years and years. Just kind of fester, you know, so you become a rather negative individual. Nothing's as bright as it should be. Uh, well, in the case of the long haul with COVID, there's hope. I, I have found that it is fixable. Uh, diet. Diet can recover it. I'm coming back, and I'm loving it. And as usual, <laughs> looks like I'm a little smarter <laughs> than the doctors <laughs> because I didn't go for counseling, and I didn't take any happy pills. I changed the way I ate, and uh, things are changing rapidly. My attitude's coming back. I have a lot more energy than I did. It is the solution, and so I am encouraging everybody else out there. I couldn't stop you from getting the darn thing, because when I got on this set over here and started saying, look out, this is going to be really bad for you, what happened is I get, he's it, a government patsy. He wants us to wear masks and get shots. I got freedom, you know. Yeah, okay. Uh, Bill Gates is tracking us with microchips in the, you know, it's all this garbage poured at me I, I really felt stupid you know for even bothering to bring it up because obviously it was worthless 
Yeah, all it did was hurt me. Um, people ridiculed me for the viewpoint, but as time pro goes on, obviously, Bill was right, and a lot of you still won't admit. Uh uh. And most of you have gotten the long haul from COVID and you're depressed. You don't even know. You don't even know. I haven't figured it out yet. You know, I'm lucky. I spotted it the first day it hit the country. I said, look out, here we go. But why did that happen? Not by normal means. Okay. Just happened to be a talent that I guess I was born with to see things. I don't know how we get out of this thing, but I can tell you, I'm gonna encourage everybody to try applying a biome that will feed, or a diet that will feed your biome. Please do this, yeah. Try taking some pre and probiotic stuff. Hmm. Try it, see what happens. Honestly, it won't hurt you, all right? That ain't gonna hurt. I guarantee you may get some positive results out of it. Well, Gracie, what do you think? She's been here the whole darn time. If you've been watching my hand, I'm down here petting the cat. Hey, Gracie, you want to say hello to everybody? Mm hmm? Hey, there you go. Yeah, that's right. Say hello. Yeah, say hi. <laughs> what a good kid. Yep. And of course, Gracie's been very helpful too. Yeah, she is. She's made my life feel a whole lot better. She's a lovely little thing. She's a bundle of appreciation. This cat is so glad that we let her come into the house. Well, enough of that ramble, huh? Aloha, folks. Hang loose, eh? And uh, give us some thought. If you haven't been feeling well ever since COVID, take a look at your diet. Seriously. It will help. Most likely, it will help. <laughs>